As lower as you can. Yeah, I'm talking. <laughs> Done. Good afternoon everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here in beautiful Republic of Artsakh. I am so excited, we just arrived, and today we're gonna do a mix of history and food. Right now, where are we, Lucina? Right now, we are in one of the biggest monastic complexes in Artsakh, and this is called Dadivang. This is from 9th to 13th century, but background history goes back to 1st century, actually, when Judah's disciple, whose name was Dadi, founded the little chapel in here and actually he was the one first martyr in Artsakh preaching Christianity. First of all, let's go and see the grave of Dadi. What? Imagine it's there. When we did reconstructions of the monastery and conducted uh, some excavations, we found the grave that backs to first century. And taking into consideration all the information we have about first century and activity of Dadi in here, so we truly believe it is his grave. Main church, and here actually you can see a beautiful frescoes all over the walls. This back to 13th century. 13th century, okay. Wow. We Incredible. opened frescoes recently. They were under the black dust okay. because a Kurd family lived in here and they made a fire to heat the church, but they were using this like a home for them. So all the frescoes were under, went under the black dust and we just recently cleaned them up. But for us, it's a luck. We think that in that black dust, they just were preserved, you for know, sure. not to be destroyed after. 100% because that's how most things in the world are preserved when the sand covers it, you yeah. know? Wow, this one's really, really amazing. I love art so far. This is Mariam, uh, Madonna. Mm -hmm. This is Jesus Christ. You're reading it, huh? I read it because uh, we haven't changed alphabet from 4 or 5. <laughs> we created Armenian alphabet, we recreated actually Armenian alphabet in 4 or 5. It has never changed, so we can read any inscription from that period. We're about to see the grave. Oh, that way? So the grave dates back to the first century and where it's located, I guess this is another church right this is uh, the uh, oldest part of the monastery like it's uh, the monastery here story and the first time uh, like real monastery that is mentioned in the sources is from 9 to 13 centuries so this is the start of it with no roof love it but open no, air yeah it's it's destroyed it's very ancient you should come and see hatch cars in here the, because these are it's like jewelry work on the stone you know it's, it's really very special yeah, the hash cars are basically like uh, carvings with the cross on it. Wow, wow, those are, those are impressive. Oh my God. This is like, too much. That's this all is, carved. This is really very typical Armenian culture, as I told you before. Whenever you see this kind of a stone and cross carved on it, you can 100% be sure this is carved by an Armenian man and it represents Armenian culture. We are going for lunch. Lunch? <laughs> masterclass? Yes, plus masterclass. <laughs> so they're gonna teach us to make the bread that we tried before, yes. right? Awesome. Jingle huts. Jingle huts, great. And over here, if you want, they'll create your own metal. <laughs> create your metal. It's actually a coin, right? Yeah, it's a coin. So right now we're driving from the border to the capital. On the way, there's multiple stops. There's the monastery, there's lunch, another monastery. Kadabajan Gorge. And the gorge really reminds me of driving from like Mostar to Banya Luka in Bosnia. Just like really, really high mountains, one street going through with a stream. I mean, it really feels the same. And this republic actually has roughly 200,000 people. So like here on this side, obviously entering, you don't see that many people, but once we get to the capital, we're gonna see a lot more people. And yeah, I mean, now we just exit the gorge and it looks a lot more flat here. The mountains are becoming less and less. Still a lot of trees, a lot of farmland. It really is a gorgeous spot. 
being very peaceful out here and the air quality I mean literally I open the window and it just it smells different it smells so green and good look horses so it's a lot of farmland right all this is farmland yes getting here Thank you. How are you? Fine, you. Everything David. good, David. Pleasure, nice, nice to, meet to meet you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. 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 So we've been driving for about 45 minutes from the monastery. We know we met with the tourism, and now we're headed into a small village. We're going on a really, really rocky road, and we're gonna be eating like in a gastro yard, basically like somebody's terrace, right? Something like that. We're gonna eat really traditional food. They're gonna show us how to make the bread that we had earlier, which I cannot wait to eat again. And we're gonna try so many more delicious things. You guys have been saying the food here is amazing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I'm hungry. Are you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know you are hungry. <laughs> I'm really hungry, I'm really hungry. Hello. How are you? Nuri. Hello. David, it's pleasure. Fancy. It's my turn to make some bread. Let's do it. Yeah, let's get flour. So my hands. Uh -huh. So. <laughs> okay. So basically she's showing me what she does, right? And that's that it? Gets. So spread it out. <laughs> too much, too much, too much. <laughs> She didn't like what I did. Uh, so this guy's not doing it right. <laughs> so she flips it, right? She's so spreading it out more. Yes, yes. Like that. No. Yes. <laughs> no. Nope. Oh. Too high, too high. too <laughs> high. Okay. Round two? Flip. Round two. I'm going over here, right? Kamat, hangi star, hangi star. So, and very slowly. Slowly. You know, hangi star, sin star, sin hangi star. Okay, and where did you want me to go there? Yes. Over there? Hangi star. Very slowly. Slow. <laughs> as slower as you can. Yeah, I'm talking. <laughs> Done. <laughs> yes, I did it good. I did it good. <laughs> very good. Okay. Yeah. So you can. <laughs> <laughs> so my bread's almost ready. She's basically, she's Pulls. taking it out, yeah. right? Oh. So it's a little different. She has a stick, and then she uses yeah, another stick uses. to push it down, right? Stick it off the, off the stones. Ooh, it's hot. <laughs> and then what else does she do next? Okay, then she lowers it and puts it literally right into the fire, so that it gets really crispy on the bottom. And here we have it, a little crispy. Is she gonna flip it again? That's too hot. <laughs> okay, she flips it one more time, then she makes it crispy on that side. So both sides will have a little bit of like a burnt, you know, crust. I did no work, I just put it in. Get nuts, get nuts, get nuts. Oh, I love it. Mm. Pomegranate wine? Oh, I love it. So good. Mm -hmm. yeah. So fruity. Mm. Artsakh is famous for its pomegranate trees and they have entire gardens with pomegranate trees. You see, in Armenia, we mostly put fresh onion on the top, but here we have a cooked one. Delicious pork. It looks so juicy. Mm. Wow, like ridiculous. That is so delicious. Mm. And I like the onions. They're a little like lazy, right? Mm. Mm. It's more tasty with fingers. You guys tell me. Bread? Mm. The bread is so good. <laughs> if it's about barbecue, we use fingers. Fingers always, right? Yeah, with well, fingers is more tasty. Mm. It's like so juicy, no? Mm -hmm. It's barbecue, right? Barbecue, barbecue. pork? It's pork. Mm -hmm. It has like the little crispiness to it. Mm -hmm. mm. Is there enough for seconds? <laughs> <laughs> what I love about the bread, is that it's fluffy. I was telling her it's more like, I feel like I'm eating like a delicious pizza dough. Mm -hmm. You know how pizza is? Obviously not the pizza, but similar. The dough with the crust. Mm. Wow. So I got two different eggplants. Roasted eggplant and then this is like barbecue eggplant. The difference is the color. This one is like a little more red, a little more reddish brown. Put it here to the side. 
I'm gonna get a little more because it's so good. Eggplant in this part of the world is ridiculous. In Armenia, the eggplant. So do I eat it with the bread or just eat it? Eat with the bread. With meat. With meat too? Mm. It's good. A little sweet. You can taste the barbecue. You feel smoke in it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's smoky. And the other one? The other one is in try solo. Wow. Well, it just falls upon your mouth. Wow. Delicious eggplant. Look at this. Like super moist. The seeds. You should try this. That one? Garlic. Yeah. Garlic. The whole thing. So you gotta take off the shell and you just eat the whole thing, right? Mmm. Mmm. I've never had garlic like this before. It's like really, really nice. This is the best, especially with. It can be with potatoes. Mm -hmm. Cheese? <laughs> Always, right? The land of cheese. <laughs> she made this? Made by me, yeah. All from here, from the garden? Yes. Wow. Very deep. Did you see the yellow tomatoes? Mm hmm. <laughs> Food is too good. Okay. You guys go away. It's mine. <laughs> guys. Mm. These pork ribs. Mm. So crispy, so juicy, so fatty. What I love is that everything's organic. Literally everything comes from this farm right here. The cheese, tomatoes, the pork. And here we have the Django bread. This bread has 17 different herbs. Super green. Look at that. Oh, I love it. This is my favorite. It really is like super, super healthy. It's almost like a crepe feel with the dough, and you have all these greens inside. I love all the different tastes because you feel like feel this, like kale. I mean, I don't know all the other greens that are in here, but I could taste so many different flavors of greens, you know? I, I love greens. I'm a big vegetable guy, so. So, here in Arsat, they have capers. They don't have it in Armenia, they have it here. I love capers. Mmm, mmm, delicious taste, mmm, a little bitter, this goes really well with salmon, I usually get like toast, salmon, capers, and like um, cream cheese, mm, I can like eat like a million of these, mmm, hey, they're too good, they're too good, you like it? I love it, yeah, I really love it. <laughs> so I think my favorite piece of the pork has to be the fat. It's almost like chicharron, like really crispy fat. I think this pork ranch. Mm -hmm. mm. So fresh, so real. I have to say it's some of the best pork on the planet. Mm. Super salty. This is very similar to Armenia. My friend Genats, I really like pomegranate wine. It's basically a juice but it's fermented, right? That's why yeah. it's alcohol. Mm. So good. Okay. They make vodka right there? Yes. Too. Where? Here. Whoa. This is like a little distillery right here? Yeah. Vodka pro vodka. Atsa vodka. This is from Timilbury vodka. Oh. You smell? Syrup. Oh, oh wow. that's, that's like... That's uh, strong. This is Super strong. So apple and marbury. Pomegranate. Grape. This center is called Artsakh Berry and anything you see in this shop actually they produce in this center. There are different gems, marmalades, the garlic snacks we just had, and juices we also just had. And Pomegranate wine. They are doing great, huh? This is amazing, and I actually like the carvings the most. This wood carvings, this is actually the symbol of the Republic. Wow, this is awesome. In the so in this village they have an art school. He says in this village they have an art school and school kids made all this stuff. I'm blown away by this place. This place is really amazing. You can learn how to make bread. You can eat delicious lunch, incredible lunch. 
pork barbecue. Wow. You can also see the vodka process, the barrels, and then go in the shop and buy some gifts. I mean, I highly recommend coming here. You have to come here when you visit the Republic. Now let's continue to the monastery. Look, I had to stop here and see these sheep. Watch this, guys. All right, let's go, let's go. The guy over there is mad, he's not happy. <laughs> Mostly sheep though, most yeah. adults. We are passing through Vank village, which is one of the most beautiful revived villages in Artsakh. There you see a new school, kindergarten, some restaurant complex with a hotel, and there's something special we're going to see. It's a little surprise for you. Oh, Just yeah? wait for it, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know I was getting another surprise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every day will be a surprise. Every, every day is a surprise. We made it. Second monastery. We're on top of a mountain. And you said it's called Treasure Mountain? Treasure Mountain. We are at Ganzasar Monastery. That means Treasure Mountain. Actually, it was named so because there are silver and other metal mines inside the mountain. But people say the real treasure is monastery itself. I gotta say, this is one of the most beautiful monasteries of all time. Look at this. Look at all the intricate carvings here. A million crosses in the bottom. All these inscriptions. What else do we see? Like, what is this? Is this the, like, the main this church? This is the main entrance to the church. And you can see what a work, what a beautifully detailed work is done all around. Actually, we call this monastery the Encyclopedia of Armenian Medieval Architecture. One thing I need to mention to you guys is that the Armenians have a different type of cross. Their cross is called the blooming cross. So as you can see, it blooms, right? Like a flower in every single spot. So blooming, blooming, bloom, blooming. Interesting, huh? Just learned that right now. <laughs> and we're gonna enter the church. Saint John the Baptist. Very interesting thing about the architectural ideas we have in Artsakh and we have in Armenia. One of them is the lock stones you can see on the top, especially on the arches. So the stones are locking each other, it's like a Z cut. They are locking each other and keeping the church, keeping the construction stable and especially carrying the heavy roof. So I also want to mention especially this sign in the middle, which is eternity sign. And it's interesting that besides Tibet and India, you can find also this symbol in Armenia on the mountains, like petroglyphs, signs on the rocks. They are dating back to from 5th to 3rd millennium before Christ. And the most interesting thing is that Armenian alphabet that was recreated in 405, it just lies on swastika, like 30 six Armenian alphabet letters, you can read on that swastika, on that sign. So we just entered the church of St. John the Baptist. St. John the Baptist, and Saint why? St. John the Baptist, because some of his relics are under the altar. Oh. And under the altar, we also have some relics of Grigori Illuminator. Like. He was the first patriarch of all Armenians. Today's okay. patriarch is 132nd patriarch. Today is Katolikos. Grigori the Illuminator was the first Katolikos of all Armenians, starting from 301 when we adopted Christianity. You can also paint Hishna on the carpets. You remember, we were at the Megarian carpet factory and you saw a beautiful collection in there. So you can find a lot of interesting signs and also very typical for, for Artsakh land, including dragon carpets. And look at this wall. The inscriptions on the wall. This basically tells you everything that happened in history from this church. It tells everything about the history. It can tell even about the agreements between noble families. Like on the walls of Armenian churches, you find any information you can imagine about the country, about the history, about laws, rights, agreements, everything. Once you exit the church, go to the right and you have an incredible view over the entire mountains. Look at this, I mean, it's beautiful. And then we keep going a little more, we make it right here. And this is the original door? This is the original door, the ancient entrance to this center. And by the way, this used to be the religious center of Artsakh till 19th century. It's like their Echmiadzin, it's like their Vatican. 
Oh my god, it's it sounds medieval. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds it, medieval. It sounds medieval. Oh my god, and here we have a graveyard. This is ancient graveyard, yeah. Incredible. Look at this. Wow. I love it because all the crosses, like all the crosses are the blooming crosses. And I guess it hasn't been just like leaving it alone, right? Yeah, it's just a, like abandoned area. It's a wild plains. After a five minute drive, we're here at the village and we have this natural rock that looks like a lion. It's wow. A this is lion cave. Lion cave? Yes. Uh, it's natural, we just added the hand and here, but the head itself is natural, it's just painted and some teeth were added, okay? What? So. That's crazy. So basically the eyes and the nose were yeah. there, they added the whiskers and the teeth. Yes. Correct? Okay, yes. wow. Well, I hope you enjoyed the day in the Republic of Arsha. We basically went from the border, heading to the capital, we saw two monasteries, we had an incredible lunch. The first monastery was epic. Yeah, it was the one of the biggest monastery complexes in Artsakh. So, and the second one is the holy center of Armenians in Artsakh. What I liked the most about the second one was that the the door, how it was all engraved yeah. and all the, the all the carvings, the carvings, on the like church. it's like magical. It really is like medieval, medieval. And then you know, obviously, lunch was just so so good. We learned how to make the bread. That's traditional bread from here. We also ate some delicious pork barbecue, capers. What else? Cheese, more bread, pomegranate wine. Pomegranate Don't wine. Skip the wine. I'll never skip the wine. <laughs> never, never. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave us a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you in the next travel food adventure in the Republic of Arsha. I said all right? Perfect. <laughs>